Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, first off, we got to do a couple of things. I have been working last minute to get everything out here in the shop, set up the cameras and all. And I need to do an audio check to make sure that y'all can hear me. So I'm going to be using a combination of my microphone, which you see here, as well as my headphones and all. And I want to uh, make sure that uh, y'all can hear me no matter which one I'm using. So we're going to do an audio check on a couple of things. So first of all, with my microphone, can y'all hear me? All right, good, loud and clear. All right, because normally I'm monitoring the stream uh, with headphones on and um, it's a little bit of a different setup out here. I'm working off of a laptop instead of my dual screen system where I have every control of everything. So um, the thing that I want to uh, make sure of is that you can hear me. Now that you all have said that you can hear me loud and clear uh, with this microphone, I'm now going to change over to my headphone microphone and we're going to do that same test. The audio is going to be a little bit different and I understand that it's going to be a little bit different, uh, but hopefully uh, it'll somewhat be the same because I have been working up until this last second trying to get everything and I did not get everything set up that I needed to. But um, <laughs> tomorrow night is going to be much better. Tonight's going to, it's, 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 it was terrible for me today. Um, all right, let's, uh, let me switch over to my headphones and microphones. I don't like these. I don't like these blue colors. Ooh. Look like some kind of gamer or something. All right, we're gonna change my microphone. Stand by. Okay, I'm talking right now, so let me know if you can hear me with the headset microphone on. Testing one, two, three. <laughs> this is, I should have had all this testing done up until now, but let me know if you can hear me. Look like a pilot. There you go. Thanks, big daddy. <laughs> all right, so uh, the audio is gonna be a little bit different between the two mics, but hopefully you can hear me still well uh, with this one. Uh, now that I know that you can hear me with this one, I'm going to switch cameras so I can stand up. I've got three cameras going on here, so bear with me a second. Okay, so now I'm at my overhead camera, which is kind of showing a little bit of an overhead of the shop and all. Now, the thing with this is, is I just hung a flat wall screen TV, a flat screen TV on the wall so I could see what the camera behind me is seeing. But I also wanted to be able to use it as a second screen so that when I'm talking to you, I can read your comments. So if you see me looking down, uh, my apologies. Um, I'm just looking at your comments and everything. And so uh, I wanted to be able to give you a kind of a somewhat of a semi shop tour, but we're only in one small corner of my shop where my CNC machine is. Uh, we're not, uh, everything is kind of fixed where it's at. So my camera down on the computer uh, is uh, my, you know, the built-in webcam. Uh, the camera up here at the TV is this uh, camera that I use uh, each day. And then we have a camera behind me here that, um, that will be showing the, uh, the CNC machine. Now that we've got that out of the way and everything, um, I've got my fingers crossed that everything goes well uh, with this in the stream. And I'm going to perfect this to where I have multiple camera setups. Man, let me tell you something, guys. I had to go, I had to run out today and buy a capture card device to get the uh, main camera back here to be able to connect and all. 160 bucks that thing cost. Those things aren't cheap, man. Holy jeez. But, uh, it was funny. I was calling everywhere, man. I ended up having to go to a video game place, GameStop. Thank you, GameStop, for hooking me up with that. Um, but the 
last week, uh, if you joined us uh, last week or if you saw last week's video, we did a design. Uh, and I wanted to take that design into the shop to the carving stage. Uh, and then I want to um, go from the carving stage to the finish stage. And most likely that's going to be, um, you know, tomorrow or something, because this is going to be a long carving and we're not going to run the machine uh, all, you know, all, all day and everything. Now I've got the board clamped in here, but we've got to prep the board still. So we're not, we're not quite ready to, to do that. Um, or we're not quite ready to, uh, uh, carve. I just have it climbed in here to make sure that everything is working. Let me switch over to the other camera. Uh, the other camera, you're not going to be able to see me. Me. You're going to be looking right at the uh, the machine here. And let's talk about um, let's talk about the uh, what we're going to be doing. Okay, so let's switch over to the other camera. And if I had two screens, this would so much be so much easier. All right. Now, you still should be able to hear me, but now you should be looking at the uh, the table here. And uh, let's talk about a little bit about my setup that I have uh, to begin with. And let's move the board out of the way for a minute. So... Unfortunately, because I, I wanted to mount the camera up high so I could get a full on view of the CNC machine. But right now I only have this corner. So I do apologize about that. I wanted to be able to show the whole machine. Uh, but all, all I could get uh, when I get my new camera mount, uh, I got to make it not get it. When I make my new camera mount, I'll mount it up high in the ceiling. So it's coming down and I'll be able to control it a little bit better. Again, this is a work in progress here, boy. Um, but I've got my wasteboard on my table and my wasteboard, uh, is set up with fences, uh, and cam stops right now. I'm just using cams, uh, stops to, uh, clamp everything in and all of my boards reference off of this corner here where these stops are. And these stops are removable. Uh, you know, I can place them wherever I want, uh, in things, but, uh, they're, uh, I've got them set up for this board. But what we're going to be doing first is we've got to apply our stencil film uh, to the material because I don't want to sand this when I paint it or anything. And I'm going to switch back uh, to me for a minute so I can talk to you uh, a little bit. And I wish I this was a much easier way to do this. Um, but with the Aura Mask, uh, what I'm planning on doing is I'm, I'm planning on painting this sign. And uh, there's a couple of ways that you could do that if you're if you're new to CNC and everything. Uh, one is you could seal your material uh, with, um, you know, a, a shellac or a, a lacquer finish or something. Uh, you could carve and paint. And if you're using like acrylics or water-based paint, you could easily wipe them off. You know, uh, anything that gets out of that carved area and stuff. Um, I'm going to be... Uh, or you could seal it, paint, and then sand everything. Um, and, uh, you know, down to the car gear. Well, I don't want to do that. I, I, I really don't. Even though I have a drum sander somewhere behind me, it's kind of hiding over here in the corner. Uh, I don't I don't want to do that. It wastes a lot of sandpaper. So I'm going to be using Aura Mask. And the stencil film uh, is, uh, this is Aura Mask 813. And it is uh, phenomenal for... Uh, this application because this is going to allow me to um, cover the material, carve, paint, and then peel the aura mask off uh, and uh, uh, very minimal sanding and all. Now, the one thing that I am going to do, let me get these. I didn't want to wear a hat. I was wearing a hat just, I don't know why the hell I was wearing a hat. I think I ran out to Lowe's and I didn't want to do my hair. So I was having a bad hair day. Uh, anyway, um, with the uh, what I'm going to do with the aura mask is so that the paint that I use doesn't bleed into that open grain in those carved areas and wick up to the surface underneath the aura mask, uh, which, you know, that's always when you go through a lot of prep and everything uh, and um, 
you go through everything and you think you got it all right and all of a sudden your paint's just so wet that it actually wicks up like a candle wick you know it just wicks up into the grain and when you peeled it off you're like oh geez man what's that and then you still have to sand well to prevent that i'm going to be using a shellac now hang tight for a second i don't have everything around me let me grab what i'm going to use uh for the material so hold tight I'm sorry, that was probably pretty loud when I set that microphone down. Um, so the shellac uh, that we're going to be using is just a simple rattle can, spray can, uh, Zinsser shellac, and it dries in a couple of minutes. And so I'm going to, after I carve, I'm going to seal that carved area with a couple of coats of the shellac. Uh, because the shellac can be used as an undercoat for my paints and, and, and other finishes and stuff. And that's going to seal that open end grain that's in the cut uh, to prevent that paint from wicking up into the surface. So we're going to use a combination of our shellac, our zinzer shellac, and our aura mask uh, to carve this product. So I'm going to go through and uh, change the camera back over to the CNC, and we're going to go through applying the... Um, or a mask and then we're going to set up zero out the machine and uh, we'll go so over some questions and then we'll get the machine kind of running a bit now when the machine runs uh, of course um, I'll be able to kind of uh, chat with you in the chat uh, I'm going to mute the mic so it's not blowing y'all's ears out and all that stuff but we're going to <laughs> we're going to see how we, we can make this work uh, and I'll I wish I had a closed in room where I could just go to another uh, system and talk to you while it's carving and we could watch it carve and that was the idea uh, was to be in the other computer with this computer connected so we could be talking while the machine's out here running and we can watch it and maybe we could do that another time if I get the setup complete uh, and all so let's take a minute uh, you're going to see me kneel down here and I'm going to go back to the main front camera oh man we're going to get dizzy with all these cameras all right, and I'm sitting back in front of the uh, computer. You can see I still got wires and everything hanging all around me uh, on this setup, but I want to see what your comments and all are uh, to, God, I look, I do look like a pal. I look rough, um, but uh, don't hold it against me. Let's see here. Uh, where do you get the aura mask? Uh, great question, Mike. Mike asked, uh, where do you get the aura mask? Uh, Amazon, uh, Dean says. Uh, and uh, he's exactly right. Amazon, uh, it's Aura Mask 813. Uh, and uh, Amazon is a great place to get it. I buy, uh, the roll that I buy is um, 12 inches. I think that's 12 inches. Let me see here. It's, I know it's like 10 foot long or something like that. Let me see that yeah, 12 inches. Uh, 12 by 10 foot roll and I believe it's like uh, 20 bucks 15 20 bucks uh, for that and um, it will uh, uh, last me a couple of projects you know uh, it's, it's, it's only 10 foot long so uh, and I'll just restock as I need it uh, I don't buy anything bigger than that I use it as I you know as it comes and as I need it so that's a great question where do you get the war mask Amazon is the best place that I found um, you can also get it from sign supply companies as Michael Bell says. Um, so, uh, that's, that's, that's also exactly correct. Now, another product, uh, to help prevent wicking of your paints and finishes and stuff. Another product that I use is, um, I just went Marsh, <laughs> M-A-R-S-H, um, marsh uh spray ink and uh the it's a spray ink and when it when it dries it dries it powders over almost like a powder coat uh and it doesn't wick uh and, and all but i don't have any marsh with me i'm using regular paint now uh dave gatton's with us tonight thank you dave and um yes uh dave you're exactly right and i did not get a chance to set that up tonight uh, but Dave's is telling me, hey, Laney, you know, with StreamYard, by using the laptop with the camera, uh, 
you can add that an extra computer on as a guest. And that's exactly what StreamYard told me as well. Uh, and uh, Dave, I didn't get that set up right away. Uh, so um, I may, uh, we may do that. We may, um, I may send myself a link and get it set up over there and with it when we start carving and then run over and uh, uh, go set it up. I, w I would want my laptop here to be the guest camera and my computer over there being the main camera so I can control things. Uh, but um, it might be a little bit backwards. Um, deer in the headlight look. Yeah, but I forgot what I was going to say. Um, so uh, once again, everyone, thank you for joining me. Let's go ahead and switch over to our other camera and let's start prepping this board. There's no time like the present. Let's get this aura mask on and, um, and then uh, we'll get this board clamped down and get the machine zeroed out and get it running. And again, this is the first in the shop. So it's a little, it's going to be a little rough around the edges. Uh, I'm going to fine tune everything over the weekend. And uh, hopefully next week we're going to rock it, uh, you know, and uh, nail it. Now next week, most likely it won't be like a three day project or something. We might do it in, in, in the same step or something, but uh, we're going to be working with things like joints, making boxes and all. Uh, I'm trying to figure out, and you guys and girls can tell me, uh, you know, with the digital wood cover, not everybody in that's following me here on Spindle TV are digital wood cover customers. And so not everybody has the capability of doing joints and stuff like dovetails and everything off the end of the table. Our machine with our joint making jig has the ability to carve off the end of the table to do dovetails and all. And I want to really do a project uh, making a box and, and doing these different joints and things uh, on Spindle TV with you guys and girls. But at the same time, I don't want to lose you guys and girls as viewers uh, because you don't have the capability of doing that. So it doesn't interest you and everything. So let me know if you just like to see it, like to see the process of designing uh, the box uh, in the software and the joints and stuff. And um, then going into, uh, you know, and, and making it, you know, and building that box, the jewelry box or something. I got, I got two jewelry boxes I got to make. Uh, and so I thought that would be, a good video to show. So let me give a couple of shout outs to everybody. Um, first of all, Dave Gatton, thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, Cameron, uh, Dean, always good to see you. Crystal M, wonderful to see you back uh, from Lovell. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Uh, Rodney, uh, Eli, hey, good to see you back, Eli. Um, and uh, uh, Roger. And let me go back up. Let me say a couple of hellos to Mike. <clears throat> Smith, Mike, is always here uh, each week. Uh, I really appreciate you, Mike. Uh, you know, uh, you, you've been with me, I think, since the beginning and, uh, and all. Ken Singleton and everything. Troy, I can't name everybody. There's 60 of you in here. But just know that I really appreciate you hanging out with me tonight and uh, seeing what we got going on. But uh, uh, I would love to um, really... You, it looks like I'm in a really cramped spot right here, right? Well, this is so behind me or beside me with all these wires hanging out. I just have, all right, let me see if I can pull this up. This is that freaking $160 capture card that's that's capturing all the cameras. And it's got to have its permanent place. But I, I just threw it up there for right now. But this is my, uh, there's no such thing as scrap in my shop. So this is my little uh, scrap wood rack uh, where I have uh, pieces or cutoffs or parts that I'm going to uh, go up in the panels. I have my aluminum. I have uh, my materials for lithophanes. Uh, we're going to do a lithophane. I got to carve two lithophanes. Those are 3D uh, objects that are lit uh, from behind in a translucent material like corian or candlestone. I'm going to be using candlestone so you can see that. So we're, that's going to be coming up and stuff. But this is my little rack here. And um, on the other side of this, I have uh, my radio arm saw, my band saw, my table saw, uh, and everything. And unfortunately, the cameras are so fixed, I can't get it around. Uh, that big, let me move this out of the way. This big blue thing right here behind me, that's my 50-watt uh, laser uh, for laser engraving and stuff. Uh, so you might see some laser projects come up on that uh, in the future. Uh, to my immediate uh, left here is the CNC machine, and then right directly behind me is a drum sander. And over on this back wall, I've got a, you might be able to see when I'm in the, the overhead camera, 
I've got a big panel saw that takes up the whole freaking shop. Uh, one of these days, you guys and girls are, uh, you know, going to see me in a big shop. I'm looking at building a 30 by 30 building uh, to uh, take uh, it to turn into a shop and an instruction studio so I can teach people live uh, here in Ocala when all of this social distancing ends and everything. Um, and uh, the... Uh, I'd love to have that kind of room to stretch out because it look it's kind of tight. Like over here, I'm hitting this. Over here, I'm hitting my CNC, and it's like I'm in a cramped space right here right now. Um, let's see what we got here. Can we get some more thumbs up here? I appreciate you, Dean, for that. Uh, I'm so happy to finally catch a live event. Hey, Chris Crosscrafts, thank you for catching a live event. I appreciate you. And um, yeah, man, uh, yeah, everything is uh, doing well with me. Um, we're doing great. It was a, I woke up early this morning and I started prepping and everything. I'm trying to hang the flat screen TV up on the wall uh, back here so that I could uh, put mount the camera on it. And then I can see what the big cameras or main camera showing. And as I'm holding up this flat screen TV, trying to screw this lag bolt in the wall, the head of the lag bolt snaps off. I was like, Oh my God. So anyway, and it was last minute trying to get all these things. I had to make a run to GameStop to get the capture card and it was all last minute, but I appreciate you. We're going to get this. We're going to get through this. We're going to have some fun. All right, let's switch over cameras. Uh, and let's get some, uh, project going on here and all this rambling and talking is just too much. Let's go ahead and switch over here. All right, let me get out of this chair. And I'm glad I had a belt on it. Y'all have seen some plumbers crack. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now, the thing of this is, is um, the, uh, let me see. Can I do this? Hello. The, uh, the thing of this is, is you're not going to be able to see me. You're going to see my hands and kind of motions and all as I'm talking. Uh, but hopefully you'll get the uh, idea and everything. So let's get the material back up here. Now, I have a just a simple panel and if you remember from last Tuesday night our project was 16 inches by 23 and a half by three quarter uh, and um, I took some this is a glued up panel uh, I took some materials that I had around uh, to just make up this panel and I had a choice of using select pine I was gonna make this out of uh, you know I'm just making it out of simple pine uh, but I was going to use select pine that didn't have any knots or defects in it uh, to glue up the, uh, or to, to make the panel up. But I have another project that I'm going to be using this for. So I went ahead and used some pine boards that I had laying around and they have a few knots uh, and things in them, but they're, they're very stable knots and stuff. So I didn't need to do any, um resin fill or anything like that to stabilize it and um you know so uh, all i have to do is just kind of figure out uh what side that i'm going to use and it's going to be this side here and we're going to go ahead and uh let me get the corner up there get stabilized my CNC for tonight is going to be the workbench uh, for applying the uh, aura mask and everything. And um, uh, hopefully you'll be able to see that. And I, if you hear me pause and, and stuff, it's because I'm trying to look over at the comments. I wish I, I I'm going to have another monitor hanging up here so I can, while I'm working at the table like this, I can be looking at it and reading your comments and stuff. So if I miss any of your comments, I will go back. Uh, in just a moment and uh, uh, follow up with that. So uh, what the main goal of that we want to achieve with the aura mask is that we want to apply it, uh, uh, get good adhesion, but no bubbles in it uh, and everything. So what I'm going to do now, my aura mask is only 12 inches wide. Uh, so uh, I will be doing two strips. Uh, of it um, uh, where one overlaps the other slightly and I don't have to account the aura mask is very thin so I don't really have to account for that in my carving details as far as like my start depth and all uh, if I was concerned about it I could give myself a little bit of a ten thousandths of an inch start depth and all uh, and all but it's so thin uh, that I, I never I just the top of the aura mask is going to be my zero 
and everything. So I'm going to do a little bit of an overhang on the front here, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut off a strip of that. There we go. And then I'm just going to roll out another roll. Here. Cut that off. Now I don't want to be trying to handle all of this overhang and everything. Uh, and I can set that roll over there now. I don't want to try to handle all of this overhang and stuff, so I'm going to trim one of these out. And uh, this particular one, and sometimes this happens in a roll, and I don't know how well you can see, but there's a slight defect in the aura mask, uh, which means that area right there, that little glow shiny area right there is not going to adhere. Um, so that's going to be the piece that I cut off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, make sure I got a little bit of an overhang on this side and then I'll turn that bad side to me. And I don't want much of an overlap, just enough, maybe like an inch or so. Uh, and then I'll come in and uh, cut that off. You hear me pausing because I'm looking for my tape. All right. Uh, and I'm, all I'm going to do is just for a second, take this uh, in a couple of spots here, uh, just as a second pair of hands for me while I cut off this overhang. So, uh, I'm hoping that, that everything goes well. And don't worry about how much overhang and all you've got uh, and, and everything or being neat about it because uh, if you wanted to, you could trim the rest of that off. And now, I don't waste that aura mask. Uh, that, that leftover bit is going to be... Um, it's going to be used uh, in other projects at all. All right, now, what else I have here is I've got a little J roller. It's just a little roller, a little pressure roller. And uh, I'm gonna be using a squeegee to help me apply this. Now, the best way to apply the ore mask is, let's um, move that out of the way for a minute is if we get it started, so if we get a little corner started here, and we're going to peel back about an inch and then fold this over, and then we're going to come in here and get this positioned where everything looks good. And then I'm going to take and get that first part really stuck on. And I'm going to put a lot of pressure on it uh, to get it to adhere. And then I can just take and flip this over and grab this little lip here. And as I take my squeegee, um, I can start to squeegee this on, pulling that excess. And I'm working my way from the center and just kind of back and forth. Now the key thing is, is um, kind of coming back and if there's any bubbles, push them right out. If you want to try to prevent that. I'll try to do this fast. It's not so boring for y'all. And it's not necessarily a once and done thing, but you do want to try to get it on without having to peel it back up uh, because you, you lose some of the adhesion uh, when that happens uh, and everything, you know, if you have to peel it back up. So we'll... Toss that excess aside <laughs> and uh, clean that up. And then I'm really going to hit the edges 
uh, with it, and I'm pushing from the center outwards to get that applied. And nice back and forth pressure. And then I'm going to come with my little roller here and really push down on that uh, and get that to it here. And I'm really uh, getting that water uh, mass to. Look at there, so much pressure you broke your arm. All right, so we got that. Dropping my accessories. Uh, as far as overhanging stuff, uh, I'm going to have a little bit of overhang, but I don't want a whole bunch. Uh, so I'll just trim as I go through. And uh, a good razor knife or a pair of scissors works well. All right, let's get that other piece on. I'm going to look over my corner and let me see how uh, a piece of scrap wood is great too. Absolutely, a piece of crap, uh, crap a piece of scrap wood uh, for a squeegee is excellent. And uh, I'll show you a uh, piece that I use. Oh, okay. I thought I'd show you a piece that I use. Uh, I have a piece of quarter inch birch plywood that I have rounded over the edges uh, to give the edges a little soft and that makes it and it's nice and big for my hand uh, and it works great as a squeezy as well. So yeah, that was Crystal that said that. Excellent. I think he will spray it after the machine too. Yes, I will be uh, spraying after I carve, after the, after the project is carved, uh, I will be spraying the Zinsser shellac on it to seal that carved area. Now, if any of you have asked if I've sealed the board before putting the aura mask on, no, I did not. Um, I did not apply any sealer. Now, I know some uh, individuals that will put a finish on. Uh, they'll, if they're staining their project board or what have you, they'll put a finish on. Uh, then they'll uh, they'll stain it, finish it, and then they'll aura mask carve and all that stuff. And that's absolutely, uh, yes, you can absolutely do that uh, without problem. And so, once again, I started that edge. Just going to get that pushed on here. And I'm trying to uh, look over my shoulder at your comments and stuff, too, so I can commentary you know? And hopefully, y'all get bored of just listening to me talk here. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. Do you clean the surface first? Do I clean the surface first? Um, I run my material, all of my boards and everything run through my uh, drum sander. Uh, I have a um, Supermax uh, 1938 drum sander. And uh, then they'll get blown off. And then they'll get uh, tack ragged. Uh, you know, I use a tack cloth, not rag, tack cloth. Uh, to make sure there's no dust or anything on it and everything. So, because I want good adhesion to the board uh, and stuff. And so, the uh, tack cloth usually will pick up any excess stuff. I have a hose that I'll blow it off first after it goes to the drum center, and then I'll come back and get finished with the tack cloth and stuff. All right, so we'll get through this here. Oops. Gave myself a little bit of a bubble. Push that out. Sometimes the aura mask can be a little finicky when you're working with big sheets. That's why I only work with 12 inch sheets at a time. Um, the the uh, working with big sheets and big projects and all, trying to manage those bubbles and everything. This is not like a you know sign vinyl or something that has uh, you know egress and, and everything. Now, if you don't want to go out and buy aura mask, you know before I started using aura mask, which I highly recommend. But uh, before I started using aura mask, I used to use contact paper. Seriously, from Walmart, I used to go down and get shelf contact liner, the white uh, sh shelf liner. And uh, that contact paper, it worked well. The only thing that I did not like about it is it doesn't cut as sharp and fine of lines. And it has a tendency to tear. Um, so uh, 
you know, it was a game changer when I switched over to the Aura Mask you know, after a lot of uh, recommendations and, you know, it's been a few years. All right, almost there. Okay. So let's go ahead and kill off that excess. All right, now we're getting down to the fun stuff. Uh, let me get this trimmed up here. And I don't, I don't recommend the fish shitty fish that we shoot my Man, I not. Okay, hold on a second. We gotta change up. Oh, grab my razor knife here. It's a little exact. Um, the, but you don't want a whole lot of overhang. Uh, sometimes it has a tendency, depending on, you know, the uh, supplier, sometimes it has a tendency to lift up on the corners. That's why I really, on the edges, not the corners. That's why I really pay attention to the edges when I'm rolling it uh, and everything. Okay, let me get this, uh, this little pressure on this. And these different these squeezies have different edges. Some are softer, some are harder. And it cuts very, very well. All right. I think we're good. Let me just burnish these edges on. All right. Do not buy. This is Joanne Fabrics. Your freaking roller is terrible. I got a big J roller for doing it when I work with the contact cement and uh, uh, and everything. Uh, um, putting uh, finishes on top of boards. Uh, what is it called? My, my mind just went blank. Uh, Mason, uh, Mason, no, not Mason. Uh, Formica. Formica. I'm putting Formica on. Okay. So we are, we're good there. Let me trim up this edge a bit and the edge uh, you know as far as the overhang it's uh, all good you know whatever you want to overhang um, but on my corner I work off the corner here uh, so I have about a three inch by three inch area that I actually bring it right up to the material So that my corner block can sit on there and you'll see that here in just a moment all right let's get this clamped into position uh, so the project board without all of this stuff in the way make sure i'm sitting flat on my table i'm not sitting on anything the project board uh, will reference up against uh, my fences on the table and um, i didn't get a chance to trim up any shims and all but uh i'll just use these boards a little shim here because my cam hole happens to be about a half inch away from where it needs to be and so i can drop that down and just lock that in and then here on the back side we'll lock that in all right now, when you're camming and everything, you got to be careful that it doesn't push that material up. And uh, the edge stops. Uh, there's some edge stops that you can use where it actually puts down pressure on it as it uh, as it cams. And in the case of this, this one, up. There we go. that's good. All right. All right, let's get the machine powered up. Hopefully the fan of the machine is not going to be too loud for you guys and girls. I'm going to um, the uh, I'm going to test this. I'll look at your chats and all and tell me if you can still hear me. Machine, let's get all this stuff up. All right, now. The one thing that I'm super uh, disappointed with is that um, my main controller that I use 
uh, to control my machine, this capture card that I plugged in um, is interfering with my controller and I didn't have time. I only had seven minutes before the broadcast started. I didn't have time to figure out what it was. So I'm back to my regular controller that comes standard with the machine. But normally I use a, uh, a gaming controller uh, for the operation and stuff. Uh, uh, but uh, that capture card is doing something with the signal. So I will, uh, I'll get that figured out for tomorrow. So let's bring the uh, router up here. Now, uh, my corner block, quick set block, you guys and girls, uh, you've probably seen these out on the web everywhere. You know, uh, Bill Briggs has his XYZ uh, zeroing, you know, edge finder, uh, digital wood carver. We have our digital wood carver quick set zeroing tool. And uh, hand in hand, pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see if I can uh, get this set up in the position. Let's see if I can zoom in. I'll change the camera angle here in a second. And this is uh, all right. Let me see if I can change this camera angle for a minute. To do, to. It's going to be weird for a second, ladies and gentlemen, as we drop down here. Sorry about that. I need a camera guy or girl. Anybody take us? Any takers? I'm hiring. Okay. Uh, let's see. How's that look? That's good. All right. So. Having a single screen, everything, all of my controller program and all that's on one screen. So let me look at your comments before I run this operation here uh, for zeroing out the machine. And uh, let's see here. Could you tilt the camera up a little bit to see more of the cutting area? Yes, I will. Uh, after I zero out the machine, Jeff, I sure will. Let's see here. We all talking about drum sanders. Uh, drum sanders for final pressure. Yes, rollers and squeegees, the craft departments do. Okay, guys and girls, I'm going to switch over to my controller program. And I really, what I'm disappointed about is uh, being able to do the screen share. Let's see if I can do that. Give me a second here. Let me see if I can share the screen. And it's going to be weird when I share the screen. There might, there might be some feedback or what have you. But okay. Let's see what y'all are saying. Yeah, if I. I'm hoping that the it's going to go into like a, one of those infinity mirrors here for a second. Bear with me a second. Let's get it there. And let's come back here. All right. So as you can see, I've got the file loaded uh, for the um, Hopefully, y'all can still hear me. Is the screen share? Let me. Yeah. Um, the I got the file loaded in the Planet CNC TNG, the next generation TNG software, and up here are my quick set tools uh, for that uh, quick set guide. Uh, that's going to allow me to zero out my machine, and so um, I've got the tool path loaded. As you can see, the design that we created. Uh, last week and so let's go ahead and stop sharing the screen and let's let me run that
quick set tool. I'm going to use my quarter inch tool here. Make sure that I'm set up where I need to be. Which I am. All right, let's go ahead and click OK. Okay, so with that, I can move that out of the way, and I can bring the machine back home. And be ready to go. All right, let's switch back to the main screen, and to me for a minute. Such a narcissist, I need to see me for a minute. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Uh, okay, so I've got the software loaded uh, with the toolpath. We've got the wire mask applied. I'm going to zoom and set the camera up so you can see a full overhead view uh, of the, uh, the cutting area and everything. And what I may end up doing is uh, adjusting this camera as well so you can maybe see it from the backside and stuff. But... We'll get that set up. But before I start this, because it's going to be muted and all, do y'all have any questions about anything up to this point that we can, uh, that I can answer before we uh, uh, start running this project? And of course, I'm only going to run, I'm not going to run long. Uh, we'll probably get a little bit into it and everything uh, because it would be just absolutely unentertaining to sit there and watch a card for a whole hour, right? Uh, so. Uh, we'll, we'll stop, but I do want to get some carving going. I want to show you, uh, I'd like to uh, show you the cuts and everything uh, with the mask and how it acts and stuff. And um, go from there. So let's see here. Let's see here. David Kennedy says, I like the drum stand. So you guys and girls are, I, I'm now catching on to what you're saying about the drum sander. So technically, I could. Now, I would take the sandpaper off or what have you, uh, but um, off the roller. But yeah, that's a good idea. Who said that? Was that uh, Crystal that came up with that? Uh, running it through the drum sander for that final pressure uh, to really adhere that on? That's pretty slick. I, I never even thought of that. Um, I, I'll have to give that a try and see how that works um, and all. And it just uh, kicked into me for a minute when I saw uh, some of the other comments how that would work and everything. Um, Eli asked the question of, what do I think about the uh, Avid 5 by 10 CNC? Well, Avid makes a very good CNC, uh, Eli. Um, you know, I work with Digital Woodcarver. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm kind of uh, biased a little bit towards digital recovery because I love uh, the digital recovery machines. But uh, I can't knock, uh, you know, Avid. They have a very, very nice machine. As a matter of fact, me personally, I was actually looking at one of their plasma units uh, and everything. But uh, um, you know, uh, it all depends on, uh, you know, what you're, what you're looking for and, and your, your budget and your flagging and pricing. And that, so. uh, but uh, it's a good machine. I would love you to buy a digital loop cover. Uh, Baron Lynn, what about the 30 by 50? <laughs> All right, Baron. Uh, Burl and I actually talked about the 30 by 50 with the automatic tool changer, our new unit that we're designing and coming out with. Uh, it's Burl's going to, as soon as things get uh, you know uh, somewhat back to normal, he's going to start focusing his attention back on that so we can get that. Uh, ready to sell because you're on the list, Baron, and I've got about uh, 10 others that are uh, going to be purchasing that machine when it uh, becomes available. And it's going to be a 30 by 50, uh, 30 by 48 cutting area uh, on the machine with an automatic tool tube. So that'll be a nice one. Let's see here. What other questions do y'all have? Um, was the bid a 20, 60 degree B bid? Yes. So uh, the bid that you see in uh, the uh, 
machine right now is a 0.25 60 degree V bit. It's the white side 1541. Uh, that's the bit that I uh, set this job up for, and that's the bit that I'm going to be using. So it is the white side 1541 60 degree V bit. Um, so let's see. Yeah. No blue books, etc. Can you stop a project and start where you left after? Yes. So that is a great question. If I'm running this, right, and I'm going to be stopping it uh, to, you know, uh, talk with you more or say our goodbyes or whatever the case may be, uh, can you stop in the middle of a project and then pick up later where you left off? Yes, you can. Because uh, when you stop, uh, the software will identify the line or the position that you stopped on. Uh, one of the things that you want to, you know, make sure of is that uh, you don't lose your X and Y position. Or if you did, it, you know, what I mean by that is if I power the machine down, uh, like shut it down for the night or whatever, uh, I, you know, there could be a chance that the, you know, my answer could move. I could bump into it or whatever. It could be. Uh, and I would have to reset my X, Y, and Z zero. That's why I love the quick set zeroing tool because it'll get me right back to where I started. Um, instead of eyeballing it and hoping that I get it right the next time. Uh, but yes, you can, the software will uh, highlight the line that it stops on. You can identify that line number and you can have the software go right back to that line number and continue when you left off uh, at a later date in time. Uh, if you pause it, if you just pause the machine, shut the spindle down, you can pause the machine, then you just turn the spindle on, unpause, you better continue on. But if you stop it, uh, if you hit start, it would want to start from the beginning. So you have to go to the line of G code that's highlighted and right click and start from that selected line. That's a good question. Uh, let's see how. Dean, is that Mach 3 software? No, it is not Mach 3. It is Planet CNC TNG. TNG stands for the next generation. Uh, we used to use Mach 3 back in the day. Uh, Mach 3 is a pioneer, been around for ages and stuff uh, and all, but um, a little bit before my time. Uh, we, we, we switched over to Planet CNC because it's much more intuitive and user friendly uh, uh, software and things. And um, uh, but, but Mach 3 can be used on all kinds of different CNC machines and controllers and stuff. So, but this is not Mach 3 that we're using. Or actually, not a, me personally, not a fan of Mach 3. Um, Let's see here. Free hold versus end of toolpath. I prefer to stop at the end of the tool chain. Um, so the program at the end of a tool, during a tool change, if there is a tool change, the program will come back home and shut off uh, for you to load your bit, uh, change to your next bit, load your second file, and run that second file to continue on that thing. You know. Let's see. Les says, can you do that with Mach 3? Are you talking about like a DWC quick set zeroing tool or something like that? Can you do that automatic touch off? Absolutely. Uh, you know, Bill, uh, Bill Griggs, his XYZ edge binder and all is, you know, he uses that. I think he uses it strictly with Mach 3 uh, and everything. Uh, but Mach 3 can be set up to run that operation and everything. So let me, uh, let me see here. Let me. Do you sell Planet GNG. GNG. Good, no good. Uh, T, Tango, November, Golf, Dean. Tango, November, Golf. TNG. The next generation. Uh, yes, we do sell it. Uh, it comes with a controller board uh, and the software, uh, the Planet CNC TNG software. And it comes with the controller board, and it's around $300. Or you could just get it directly from uh, planet-cnc.com. All right, let's see here. Um, all right, let's switch over to, let's do another screen share. Let's do another screen share here. Alright, hopefully y'all are seeing the uh, TNG screen. The TNG software that uh, we're running, um, you have, uh, you know, speed controls for your feed rate. 
you can decrease your speed by 10% increments or increase it by 10% increments or level out to whatever's running in the G-code. You can control the spindle speed on the fly uh, and you can increase or decrease it by 10% increments, which is perfect for fine tuning those chip loads uh, and everything. Uh, the Within the program, the software, transformational matrix is a powerful thing uh, for, um, you know, I, I don't have to clamp the board uh, square on the table. I could have that board sitting slanted crooked and I can take my CNC and touch up on the four corners of the board uh, and put those into the transformation and it will skew my G-code to carve perfectly on that board in the mother house position on the table. So I don't have to fuss with, uh, you know, uh, being completely square if I don't want to. Um, it has the ability to uh, work with mount a uh, USB type camera to your gantry and everything for zeroing out and you can uh, show your camera and everything. Um, within the software, the measure systems, uh, you can do probing for surface measuring, for warping if you're working on a warped or crooked board. Uh, you can find your surface angle. You can measure your surface height, which is uh, you know, basically a Z touch off. You can find an angle. You can touch on the edge of uh, you know a lip or material and find the angle of that and work off of that angle. Uh, tabs or slots, like if I had a data or a groove or whatever, I could touch off on the two edges of my data or groove and the software will find the center of that area. I could work from the center of the hole to zero out the machine or find the center of that hole outside corner or inside corner. And kind of what I was doing with my quick set tools up here was doing an outside corner touch off. Uh, but instead of just doing the outside corner, this actually, my touch tool is doing the edges and the Z at the same time. But there's a lot of different things uh, that you can uh, work with. And you can show the camera, like you see me on the screen here. Uh, the camera has a crosshair. Um, and the, you know, I can, you know, kind of uh, zoom in my focal point. I can adjust my, you know, zoom measure. Get that back to one line. But uh, we could actually mount a camera to the CNC machine for uh, dead nuts zeroing, you know, or finding a particular point in things, which is great if you're doing like, uh, if, you, if you're the type of person that drills a quarter inch hole inside of your board or somewhere on the waste area of your board, in case you lose your settings, you're able to take your bit back and drop it down in that hole to re zero out the machine. Well, a camera system set up and all would be great for that. Now, of course, I don't have a camera hooked on the CNC. This is reading off of my webcam on my computer here and uh, all that good stuff. So, uh, but the TNG software is uh, it's a pretty cool and powerful software. All right, let's get back out of that for just a moment and then we're going to hit start here uh, in a second. Um, let's see here. Cut out lane, never <laughs> awesome. Uh, there you go, Dean. Thanks. Don't cut me out. Uh, but uh, let me get uh, let me get this camera set up for uh, the full cut and everything. Let me kind of get uh, positioned and everything so we can kind of see a little bit of an overview of the table. You know. We're going to perfect this setup one day where I don't have to run things. All right. It's a little crooked, but you'll get the idea here in a moment. All right, everybody. Well, here's what the deal is. We're going to go ahead and start this and start the carving. I'm going to mute the mic. I will uh, talk with you in the chats. I'll try to uh, type and answer questions as we uh, have a kind of an overview of what's happening here on the CNC. I'm not going to put on dust collection or uh, the dust brush or anything like that. Uh, normally, uh, you know, I would use a uh, dust brush or, or something. I'm not going to do that. I want, you know, you guys to be able to see the carving and everything. Uh, so from time to time, periodically, I may take my air hose and blow off the table and stuff uh, and everything. All right, let's get to it. 
I'm trying to uh, get uh, back into my seat here without knocking the cable over. I got some of the cables everywhere, guys. You wouldn't believe it. We'll get it. We'll get it back here. All right. Hopefully, uh, a lot of you guys are still with me. You got 89 of them with me. Thank you for that. All right. Here we go. We're an hour in, so let's get some car window. Let's make some sawdust. I'm going to switch over to the other camera. And um, for the time that the machine is running, I'm going to mute the mics. Uh, and then... Um, and let it do its thing uh, while I'm talking with you in the chat uh, and stuff. So let's make sure that everything is clear. Out of the way. All right, let's switch cameras here. All right. So you can see, like, where I am uh, compared to my machine. I'm like in the tight corner here. So if you. Um, Bear with me a second. All these cables. <laughs> Cable management is what I'm going to be working on tonight uh, on this. But um, I'm going to give you a thumbs up here in the little camera in the front. And uh, here we go.
<clears throat> okay, that's better. I'm sitting there talking. You see me doing this one. What's he saying? What's he saying? Uh, I wanted to pause it for a moment uh, just to be able to talk to you guys. I don't want it to be too boring. You're just sitting there just watching a CNC run. Um, sorry about it popping up on the screen about the battery pack. Uh, every time I moved the camera, the plug kept pulling out of the uh, the jack, but I fixed that. A little bit of uh, duct tape. We're good. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But um, sorry about the camera position. I was trying to adjust the cameras to I could show you the uh, cleanliness of the cut. And I'm going to do that again. I'm going to bring the camera over and just show you how that aura mask cuts and everything up close. But uh, I wanted to go back while we're paused for a minute. And uh, I need your feedback um, uh, on something like this, being in the shop and watching the machine go and, and answer questions. Is this something that I should try to uh, perfect and maybe keep it going? Uh, is it uh, something that just doesn't interest you at all, you know, taking a project from design to car to finish type of thing. I'm just trying to figure out uh, which way to take this type of application. Uh, and I'll let me know. Let me know what you think in the in the chat and everything. And um, uh, if you like this video, definitely, you know, video as well. But it does help the channel get a little bit of recognition and everything. And, Every little bit of recognition helps. Uh, let's see here. Let's get um, uh, let's get where we're at here. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna continue on carving in a minute. But what I'd like to do? Where am I? I'm over here. I'm looking. Let me change cameras once again. Lord, I'm parsing too many cameras. I need a camera girl or a guy. Anyone interested? Uh, what we're gonna do is sorry about the light over my head there. Let me see if I can block that up for you. I'll just sit here and talk like this for a minute. Uh, the, um, what I would, uh, like to do is be able to answer any of your questions and stuff, but I'm going to take the camera freehand from it. It's going to be a little shaky because I don't have my, uh, gimbal, uh, right now, but I want to show you the cuts so far up to this point and the aura mask and everything, and just show why it's called a stencil film and how it's going to help when it comes to painting the project. So let's do that right now. And then I'll get over to answer your all's questions so let's get that camera on. Now, here's the thing. When I go to this camera, and I'll, uh, it is going to say charge your battery pack because my power cable just isn't long enough to get the camera where I need to get it. So you're going to see that message pop up again. And don't worry. Will. The battery pack is good. It just uh, it likes being plugged in on this camera. It's not the greatest in the world. All right. Let me see if I can get up close here uh, to this these cuts and everything and you see that aura mask how finely it cuts uh, and that's going to really help with the painting and everything even on this small thin pin stripe here which is super thin Let's get that signal back. You can still hear me, but you can't see me. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, this is what y'all's, uh, for all of you that, that subscribe to my training sessions and everything, uh, and you wonder what your, you know, that uh, $10 a month or $110 a year that y'all do for those hour training sessions and all, that's what it goes to. It goes to uh, new equipment. My cameras and all that, but the camera does not, this particular camera that I set up here does not run on battery. It has to be plugged in the wall. And if you unplug it, you've got just a few seconds. But did you see how nice and clean that was before the, I lost the camera? Let me switch back to uh, me here and switch back to uh, y'all's comments and stuff. But <laughs> sorry about losing the camera there. That I didn't know how long it would last, but I wanted to show the close up and everything on that. But that stencil film cuts so nicely, that aura mask, uh, and it makes it nice and clean. Now, when I seal this with the, the shellac, that's going to seal the open end grain that's been opened in the cut now 
to keep my paints and everything from wicking and everything. Uh, let me sit down here and uh, switch to the front camera and we'll, um, we'll answer some questions uh, that you guys and girls have been asking in the chat. So let me get back to this front facing camera here, which is not my best camera in the world. It's just a simple webcam off the... Uh, I'll try to lean forward like that to keep that light out of y'all's eyes. There we go. It's not the best camera. It's the little HD camera that's on the computer. But uh, let's see here. Keep it going. Keep it going. So you would like to keep it going. Maybe we'll fine it. We'll fine tune it a bit. Get our lighting a little bit better. Uh, a little bit more professional um, uh, structure and, and stuff. Uh, so I'll have to uh, do some rigging and stuff this weekend. Get things uh, set up. But uh, the um, Aura Mask 813, for those of you that are just joining or joining late, uh, the blue film that's on the board is Aura Mask 813. Now, Aura Mask has different levels, uh, 616, 616, I think, or something like that, and 813 and, and different things, and that's the adhesion levels. Uh, so for those of you that, uh, let's say you don't carve, let's say you do painted signs, and um, and all, and you uh, want to take and cover your board and cut out a stencil or something, trace out a stencil with an exacto knife and peel it out and be able to paint your signs and stuff instead of carving, you know, like the you know, painted signs that they did back before CNC. Uh, or mask, I think it's the 618, uh, is a medium adhesion, uh, and it's perfect for, for things like that. So it's like, you know, nice and easy to keep the edges down and all, but when you peel it up, it doesn't peel up the paint. Uh, because I like taking a sponge. Uh, one of the finishes that I like to do is uh, taking a big sponge and I pull it off shape. Let me grab it. All right, let's open it up. Just a simple all-purpose sponge, right? That you would get at Lowe's or something. And it's this big cell. It's dusting. Sawdust. Um, it's this big cell sponge. Cut it up into like six different, six or eight little pieces and everything. And uh, you, it makes a great paintbrush. You dip it in your paint, and you can cover a board super quick uh, for um, painting a board before you carve or anything like that. Uh, this is just a simple tile sponge uh, that you would see at Lowe's or something. But I cut it up into six different pieces, and they, I wash them out when I'm done with them all, so they last for a long time. Uh, but for doing texture type, uh, you know, painting on your boards and things, you know, little textures and blending and stuff, that's great. But also just sitting there, being able to just wipe on that paint with a nice, clean, smooth finish. Uh, if you're not doing rattle can spray paint, uh, yeah, that's it. A nice little piece of, nice little um, but all kinds of different things that you can do, but that wearing mask is, is awesome. Uh, is there any risk of damaging the small detailed lines when peeling it off? As far as the painting, no. Um, I have not had, I have not run into that um, when uh, painting fine lines and anything, as far as, uh, you know, if, if I have thin wood, if peeling it off and it like breaking off that wood or anything, never had the issue with that. Uh, as far as when uh, painting and then there is, you know, there's thin lines or something, uh, painting and getting that nice fine line detail, that pin striping, you know, if it's kind of the opposite effect, always have great, um, uh, great results with that and stuff. Uh, let's see here. Let me see if I keep with this format. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Dean, 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 Dean. I'm sorry, I sounded the Russian, and Dean's like, Dean, don't do that. Uh, I am really looking forward to your joinery techniques uh, on the vertical table. That's that's what I'm going to be doing, Richard. I just asked the group uh, earlier if uh, they would like to see a project like that, uh, of making a box and doing joints and all, because not everybody. I want to try to do videos and projects. Let me see if I can sit up straight so that light's not in y'all's eyes. I want to try to do video projects that applies to everyone. So that's why you very rarely see me working in a spire because not everybody has a spire. Uh, when there's something that requires a spire, that I will. But I want to be able to start doing some work in a spire, uh, doing some work in VCAR Desktop and Pro. Uh, and things like that uh, to to apply to those individuals, but I, I don't want it to be in a in a in a way that people start tuning out 
because you know it doesn't relate to them. So I try to make a project that can be done in any software. So what we're doing right now can be done in Desktop Pro or Aspire. Um, and I try on the CNC machine, can be done on any CNC machine. I try not to do too specific of the features and details of the digital wood carver. But when it comes to the joint making, I would have to use that joint making jig. Uh, so, and not everybody has that capability at all. So I'm hoping that I can still do that type of video and you will still tune in to it and, um, and maybe pick something up from it. But even though it might not be able to apply to your particular machine or, or something, I don't want to turn people off. Uh, that's my biggest uh, thing. You know, I, I, I turn enough people off every day, you know, so. <laughs> uh, but no, um, let's see here. Uh, could, so you could sponge. So you could sponge you on the card. Yes, uh, I could sponge in on the carving and stuff that I'm doing. I could dab in and, and use the sponge when I'm carving. But for me, what I'm doing here, it's going to be much easier to rattle can it uh, with light coats of paint. After I seal it with the, or, uh, with the zinsser shellac. Uh, light coats of paint and let that paint dry thoroughly and then peel everything off to reveal the finished project uh, You know once it's done um, Ed Matt uh, Throws in polycrylic with a low tack adhesive uh, polycrylic is a is a more based uh, acrylic and um, that's great for uh, if you're uh, Working with water based finishes and stuff uh, Let's see here. Where do you get 813? Or is it just for commercial? Uh, where do you get the 813, the Oramask 813? Uh, Oramask 813 is the brand. That's the particular product number for the particular type of Oramask that we use. It's a, it's a stencil. Um, let's see here. What's on this? I'm trying to answer y'all's questions, and then we're going to get back to carbon a little bit more. And we're, we've been running about an hour and 29 minutes. I'm not going to make this too long. Uh, Warren uh, Van Null asked earlier um, what speed I was running at. Uh, right now, whenever I whenever I do a V-carve, trying to get that light out of y'all's eyes, whenever I do a V-carve toolpath, um, I don't care how big my machine was. I'm running at a uh, very modest 35 inches a minute uh, for that feed rate. Uh, that gives me a nice clean cut. I don't care if I'm carving a pine, poplar, walnut, blue, uh, not blue, blue, um, blood wood, uh, or purple heart. Uh, even, you know, um, if I'm carving in my non ferrous metals or my acrylic uh, for my edge lit signs and stuff, uh, that 35 instrument is a good roundabout number for me. So that's what I carve in and stuff. Um, so uh thanks warren for that question let's see here so jeff asks a very uh, uh important question well not a very important question but a very interesting question is the bit that i'm using is it new or has it been used much uh that bit has been used a lot uh it is um you know i have uh, only got two of the 1541s. I'm looking at my little tool in here. And uh, that's my main one that I use a lot. Uh, but it, it's been used a lot. But the one thing that's important is is I, t I, wish I, had, I wish I had more room with all my stuff around me. Um, but okay. Let's see here. Let me get that comment off the screen. Okay. You see this uh, tool and surface all metals uh, Dynaglide Plus? Okay, it's a dry loop. Um, it helps uh, on my tools and stuff. It helps extend uh, blade and bit life, you know, edges and stuff. So what I do is I'll, I have a regular blade and bit cleaner uh, that if I have any brick pitch or resin, if I'm doing pines or things with pitch, uh, I'll, I'll use a wire brush and I'll clean those blades off. Uh, and after I've soaked them and after I've cleaned them and everything, uh, I spray them with this Dynaglide Plus uh, tool and surface uh, spray for all metals. And what it says here is uh, extends blade and bit life, uh, fewer sharpenings, cleaning, cleanings, fewer cleaning cycles, 
Uh, it retards resin and glue buildup, so it helps prevent resin and glue buildup on the bit tips and stuff and the blades and all. And um, it helps also with uh, lifting up if there's any rust or anything like that, you know, and all that, and it's corrosion prevention. So I use that for my bits and all, so they last a long, long time. I keep them clean and maintain them. Uh, so that's a great question, Jeff. Keep that, keep that up. Uh, let's see here. Do you let the paint dry before removing the aura mask, or do you remove it as soon as you're finished painting? Absolutely not. Uh, do not let that finish uh, be wet, that paint be wet when you're peeling it off, because you have the potential of when you're peeling it off if the paint's still wet that you're going to actually bring the paint that's on the edges of it and it could drip it could smear and all that protection that that aura mask was doing is gone it's out the window now so let that dry thoroughly let that paint or that finish dry thoroughly before you pull it off um and, and everything so let it dry let it cure it's a great question let's see here See if there's any other questions, we'll go back to carving for a little bit. Uh, it looks graphics, uh, Grimco, yeah, four cow products, yeah. Uh, Grimco uh, out of Orlando is a great place, uh, you know, to get it locally. And where I live, you know, Orlando, Grimco, or Grimco anywhere, I think it's, they're all over the place. How far in the collet do you put the bit? Now, that's a good question. Um, how far do you put the, the in the collet do you put the bit? On that particular bit, that's the white side 1541. Uh, that bit has an overall two inch length. Uh, and uh, I usually have about two fingers worth of bit sticking out, uh, which is roughly for me, I don't have very big hands, uh, but that is a inch and a quarter of bit sticking out. Uh, and um, that leaves, uh, that puts three quarters of the shank up into the collet. You want a good distance up in that collet. When it comes to, when it comes to, let me get that comment off the screen there. When it comes to, let's say, your uh, end bills or ball bills and things like that, you might be thinking, uh, when you're coming down, you don't want to be down on the flutes, you know, with that collar. You want to, you want, I usually have about a quarter of an inch of shank showing. And again, that puts about three quarters of an inch in there. There's that perfect, there's that kind of that balance. If you go down onto the flutes, you could actually rack the bit a little bit and uh, have a uh, run out uh, and things. And if you go too shallow, then you have potential of you know damaging your collet and all that. So about three quarters of the shank uh, is going to be up in there. That makes sense. That's a good question. Um, is it not? Yeah. And so uh, to follow up on Jeff's question, it's not so much that it's a new or, or it's used. It's the question is, is it sharp? Uh, and, you know, you get fine cuts with it and stuff. Uh, and the bit is sharp. Uh, I uh, don't believe in sharpening bits unless it's my, uh, let's see here. Here's one that's not sharpened. It needs to be, this one needs attention and it's a cheap one. So it's usually a uh, but a uh, uh, little bit like this and everything. Uh, I will run the edges, the flat edge only on a diamond stone and stuff and just clean up those edges, but I don't over sharpen them. Uh, unless you have a good tool smith that can, you know, that sharpens tools and knows what they're doing, I'm an advocate of changing your bits and not sharpening them uh, and, and everything. So, uh, you know, I'm a big advocate of that. Hey guys, let's uh, let's get back and let's watch this one just a little bit more and then I'll come back and we'll say our goodbyes and stuff. Um, let's go ahead and turn back over to the CNC and uh, see what we got there and then I'll come back and answer some more questions. Um, oh, here's one last question that I do want to answer. Uh, oh, Dynafly, there you go. <laughs> That's not the question. Uh, right here. Where, where was it? Is there an advantage to a quarter inch V bit as opposed to a half inch V bit? Uh, no, uh, there's actually a disadvantage uh, over the half inch V bit. Um, the quarter inch V bit, the 60 degree white side 1541 V bit that I have right now, has a point length of 0.2188. 0.2188, uh, and uh, that's my point length. That's my cutting depth and everything. Uh, the uh, half inch 60 degree B bit has a point length of 0.4375. Uh, so, um, if I were doing a, a deep type of uh, 
let's say a profile cut with a V-bit or whatever, I could exceed that point length uh, and start colliding my uh, shank into the material where, where I'm burying that bit past this point length and the shank is actually tearing through the wood. It's not tearing through the wood. It's actually going to start pushing the board around and stuff. Um, but uh, the angle, 60 degrees is 60 degrees. Uh, you're going to get the same results and things uh, with your normal V carving and everything with a half inch versus a quarter inch. The only difference is if you're doing like a profile cut where you're following a line, and if you exceed that cut depth of that quarter inch, then you're actually colliding the shank into the material, and um, you could risk damaging, you know, your material, your bit, your pilot, things like that. So um, there's a little bit of a, in, in, in that sense, there's a little bit of an advantage over the half inch versus the quarter inch. But I love the quarter inch, so uh, is that. Now, when you're doing V cars like what I'm doing here, it doesn't plunge down and straight it, you know it takes uh it's passes 0.2 of an inch uh is the pass depth you know it's a uh, 0.2188 is the bit length but the, the pass depth is 0.2 so it's clearing out that 0.2 and it's stepping over and down to clear out those wide openings I'm not talking about that you're never going to collide the shank in that form of a regular v car it's when you're actually doing a single path or something where you're exceeding that cut depth and that bit is plunging down past the flute into the shank, and now it's trying to move. Well, that shank doesn't cut, so now it's going to end up just pushing the board around and stuff. And that's what I'm referring to. Um, so that was a great question. I wanted to answer that. Let's see here. You give us a. The bit setup for the 1541. Uh, for my setup, here we go. Diameter in your tool database in Vetric, diameter is 0.25, quarter of an inch. Angle, 60 degrees. Pass depth, 0.2, okay, because the cutting tool is only 0.218, uh, eight, so 0.2. Um, the step over is 4%. The clearance pass step over is 24%. Use your percentage boxes. Uh, spindle speed, uh, you want to be around 24,000 RPMs. It's a three flute bit, so 22 to 24,000 RPMs. Feed rate for me is 35 inches a minute. Plunge rate, 25 inches a minute. So that's my setup, but you can adjust your feeds and speeds because you can run that bit, you know, much faster. But I like nice, clean cuts and everything. I'm very modest with my feed rates and stuff. So, but that would be the setup for the 1541 with the full database. All right. So let's go ahead and switch back. So you're gonna, I'll be back in the chat with you here in just a moment. Let me get over to our uh, table cam. Is that what we're gonna call it now, the table cam? There we go. And um, let me go ahead and mute the mic. And I will see you guys in the chat for just a few minutes. And we're we're at 140 here. I'm gonna probably run about 15 more minutes. I don't want this video to go over two hours. So uh, I'll come back. Uh, in about uh, 15 minutes and say our goodbyes and stuff and answer any last minute questions you have. But let's see if we can uh, get a little further along on this card. So I've got the uh, mic unmuted. This is gives you a realistic sound of what I'm listening to. And it, uh, you may want to adjust your volume for a moment. And I'm going to mute the mic again. But this is where a waterproof 
stimulus comes in. I could be pardoned uh, right now with a little stimulus and be talking to you. We would still hear it carving in the wood, but it wouldn't be as loud as this louder. So I don't have to yell at you guys and girls, but this is what I'm listening to right now.
Tell you what, everybody. Um, tomorrow night, if you do want to come back and hang out with me and chat a little bit more, talk CNC, uh, this is going to be finished uh, this evening here in a little bit. Uh, and then um, tomorrow, we're going to look at the finished project. Uh, we're going to clear coat it. It only takes two minutes for the uh, uh, clear coat it with the shellac. It only takes a couple of minutes to dry. And then we're going to do some uh, painting and discuss and everything. The paint should only take a, you know a few minutes to uh, uh, cure enough to where I can. Uh, you'll peel it and then we'll do the reveal and stuff so hopefully you'll get a chance to uh come back and join me for that um crystal don't tempt me now i i'm a, I'm a fan i like shop saver they're 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 good machines and stuff and uh you know um don't tempt me. i like Lavelle. i used to i used to enjoy them. I've been there for a while. but um come back and try out your big machine and then you're welcome to downsize and, and come on my work on my small machine it's probably no comparison there. <laughs> four by eight. That's one of the things is our 50, our DWC 5100, our 54 by eight model uh, unit. Um, hopefully when my shop space increases, so will my CNC space uh, and everything. I won't get rid of my 2440, uh, but uh, I would like to have uh, the bigger machine to be able to do those larger sheets. And uh, but I can get quite a bit done with, with the 2440, so uh, I've had it for since I bought mine in 2014. So, uh, it's been, well, uh, let's see here. Let's see what the chat's all about. Self-appointed. Um, now, I want to thank everyone. There is 78 people. We, we had a 80, we got up to 81 uh, viewers and everything. And I have something very serious to talk to you about. I did this on my other channel too, where I have 140,000 subscribers uh, that watch my videos and coming back to that guys if you know I want to last week on this design this particular design here uh, when we were doing the actual design phase uh, all you guys and girls you know you're talking about your thumbs up and everything love that you know we got our thumbs up but I did get one thumbs down for the video for that for that video on that if there is something this helps me improve so I have no problem with if somebody dislikes anything that I do because um they you know it might not appeal to them or or something you know that, that was shown they might not like or the way the design went or anything just they, they might not even like my voice i have no problem with someone voicing their opinion with a thumbs down that's why that button is there but what i would love if there's anything that you ever dislike about the videos please take a moment and leave a comment and tell me what it was that you disliked, whether it's me personally, if it's my video, the class, the topic, whatever. Because you're going to help me by, by giving me that constructive criticism. You're going to help me improve myself, this channel, the content, everything. So in the comment section, good or bad or indifferent, you know, whatever it may be, leave a comment, leave a like, you know, uh, you know uh, leave a dislike leave a comment, you know, tell me what it is that you dislike. Give me the opportunity to improve upon myself, my content, this channel to make it something that grows into uh, something phenomenal, you know, that, that everybody likes, you know, uh, and, uh, and all. So if the individual that got that, that uh, gave the dislike last week happens to be viewing right now or, or this evening, um, I would love whether it be in the comment section or just an email, sales at digitalwoodcarver.com or laney.shaughnessy, S-H-A-U-G-H-N-E-S-S-Y, at spindletv.com. Either one. Shoot me an email. Tell me what it was that you didn't like uh, and let me improve. Uh, you know, your constructive criticism is going to make me a better person. You're going to make this channel a better channel for everybody. So... When you, when you give a dislike and you don't give a reason why, which nobody ever does, right? Nobody wants to let the people know they don't want to get razzed. And nobody's going to razz you. There's no – people dislike things all the time. Nobody's going to give you a hard time about disliking something. But by voicing your opinion and being heard, you're going to help me improve. So that's all I ask. If you don't like something, let me know what it is and let me – give me the opportunity to make it better. All right. Let's see here. Um, 
man, Crystal, you're just killing me. 50 by 100? Gee. I can't repeat that. Okay, let's see here. Um, hold on. All right, let's, uh, I don't see any other questions. So we're gonna, uh, I'm looking, I'm trying to, sorry, I'm bent down, I'm trying to read the, the, the chats and all that stuff. Uh, <clears throat> hey, Darwin Bradley, tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Darwin, I'm glad you made it. Uh, you called earlier and asked if, uh, how you get in, hopefully you're watching this. Um, all right, so, Here's where we're gonna end. We're gonna say our goodbyes. Uh, we're at one minute, uh, we're about one minute out before uh, the two hour mark here. We're gonna say our goodbyes for this evening. You guys got to see a little bit of the carving. Uh, tomorrow night, join me at seven o'clock uh, live where we uh, look at the finished piece uh, and then uh, we take that finished piece and uh, do some finishing with it and stuff. Uh, do some ceiling and finishing and, and see what uh, comes of that and everything and then uh, I'll rush the process. Usually I like to let it uh, dry for hours and stuff, and then I'll peel it off. I'll rush the process a bit so we can do the reveal. Get the warm mask peeled off and do the reveal. And All right, everybody. Thank you for joining me in the shop. Uh, sorry about the roughage of everything, the roughness. It was our first time. I've got a whole lot of stuff to set up and uh, get the cameras right and, and tighten right and everything. Uh, but uh, I appreciate you. I appreciate all of you. Uh, and until tomorrow night at 7, I'll see you next time. Same time, take care.